praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. May we arise as we enter into his presence. We're going to be learning a new song which we're going to sing and we're also going to be singing complete in him. Little by little every day. Little by little in every way. Jesus is changing me. Since I've made a turn about face. Since I've made a turn about face. I've been growing in his grace. Jesus is changing me. He's changing me. He's changing me. I'm not the same way. I'm not the way I used to be. Well, it's been slow growing. But there's a knowing that one day perfect I will be. So please, you will be patient enough to learn the song and we'll sing it together. And it goes like this. Little by little every day. Little by little in every way. Jesus is changing me. Can we sing it? One, two, go. Little by little every day. Little by little in every way. Jesus is changing me. And the next one is since I've made a turn about face. I've been growing in his grace. Jesus has changed me. I will do that. Since I've made a turn about face. I've been growing in his grace. Jesus is changing me. Then we go to his chair.
I go, we thank you, Lord, for this great day, the seventh day of the month of November 2018. Thank you, Lord, for your great hand upon our lives, and thank you for great things that you want to do today. We ask, Lord, that you made this atmosphere conducive for everyone to hear you clearly in the name of Jesus. For your servant, our Father, you at the appropriate time, as you bring forth your word, let your word come with power in the name of Jesus. Let it come with clarity in the name of Jesus. Let it come precisely to do what you want it to do in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we are praying. Please let's have our seat. I'm going to read from two passages of the scripture. First, I will read from Luke chapter 9. Verse 23 to 25. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 to 25. And I will move to John chapter 15, verse 5. John 15, verse 5. 
I'm going to start reading from Luke chapter 9, verse 23 to 25. And I'm reading from New International Version. Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? John chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I pray that the Lord will interpret his word to us through his servant this morning in the name of Jesus. Good morning. I want to thank, thank the entire seminary community for welcoming me and being such an encouragement to me while I've been here since September. It's been a wonderful time of sharing and interaction that God has given me to reconnect with so many that I've known over the years, many years, since 1982 and see all that God has done and is doing in their lives and in and through them, and to be able to meet many new co-laborers together who work in the Lord's Vineyard, many of you. I'm grateful to the chaplain and to the president for giving me this opportunity to speak in chapel today. It's a privilege to look out over this great army, and you are a great army, that God has assembled here at the Nigerian Baptist Theological Seminary which is just a small portion of all of those involved in theological education in all the convention institutions. A word of personal word for me, be grateful for your time here at seminary. God has brought you here for a purpose, to be here at this very time. Allow your classes, your lecturers, your fellow students, and other experiences at seminary to sift you, shake you, challenge you and teach you so that you will be thoroughly equipped for every good work that God has for you right now and also in the future. I'm grateful for my own time in the seminary because it gave me a very strong foundation that has sustained me throughout my many years of ministry. Last week we were reminded that during the mission's emphasis that God wants to use us to go throughout the whole world to share the gospel, especially to those who've never heard about Jesus. Be willing to go anywhere, everywhere that he sends you, whenever and wherever. No words, no words can express the depths of my own personal gratitude to God for giving me and my family the privilege of serving in Nigeria and Kenya where we experience it experience blessings exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask or think and these blessings have continued to present day your president has stated on many occasions that he's never heard me speak without mentioning discipleship and that's my topic today even yesterday he asked me in his office what are you preaching on tomorrow and I said what do you think and he started laughing besides the Bible the book Disciples Are Made, Not Born by Walter Heinrichsen has shaped my thoughts and actions concerning discipleship. When we were born physically as babies, we needed someone to take care of us because we could not do it on our own. This same principle applies to spiritual babies. We need someone to guide us, teach us, help us grow so that we will become mature in Christ. We cannot, emphasize, cannot really become disciples of Jesus if we are not shown through study and through the lives of other believers what it means to follow Jesus. It's not just taking someone to church and dumping them there and say, okay, now everything is fine. They must be shown. 
Discipleship is not just going through books, even though they are extremely useful tools and for spiritual growth. It's learning how to live in a growing relationship <clears throat> with our living God and with fellow believers and with those who need to hear the gospel, who have never heard about Jesus. <clears throat> to disciples others, you must invest your time, your money, your prayer, your correction, your love, and everything about you in the lives of others and allow them also to invest in your life for discipleship is learned more through observing someone model what it means to follow Jesus than being told how to follow Jesus don't just tell somebody show them I've been involved in discipleship for more than 40 years 40 years most of you are not even that old I have learned new things each time I've met with individuals and groups. I have led, followed the master more than 50 times and learned something every time I did it. Every investment I've been privileged to make in the lives of others has been a blessing to me and not all those I sought to disciple are still standing today. But even through these, I still learn from God and experience his blessings. But there are many, many, many who are standing strong and are being used greatly to expand the kingdom of God and disciple others. This morning I want to share just a few statements about discipleship which I hope will encourage you, bless you, and give you a greater desire to invest in the lives of your families, your church members, and others, God's bring, others God brings your way through discipleship. But first, I want to sing a chorus that I hope you will remember that's entitled to be like Jesus. And uh, Pastor Blessing will lead us and we'll sing it three times. Oh 
now everyone stand and we're all going to sing at one time everybody to be like Jesus to be like Jesus that's all I Thank you for good singing. I always enjoy good singing. My first degree, as your president told you, is in music, so I always like to incorporate music in what I'm doing. Now, I have a few statements, like I said, I want to share with you. They'll be very brief, so listen closely. I pray that these observations or statements about discipleship will challenge, encourage, and strengthen you so that God will grow you spiritually and cause your heart to desire to help others grow spiritually through discipleship. And my prayer is that, that one of these things will stick in your life and not let you go until you start growing the way God really wants you to grow. <clears throat> First, a disciple understands that the most, the most important aspect of following Jesus is being in a re right relationship with God through constant fellowship with Jesus. Out of this relationship, service will flow. As it told us in John 15, fine, I'm 15, five. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit for what? How much can we do without him? Nothing. We have to have a right relationship with Jesus. A disciple is one who knows that all followers of Jesus are bound together through the love of Christ as Jesus stated in John 13, 34, and 35. And for us who are BSF, the BSF motto is what? By this? You have love one for another. They will be known by our love. So that's how we will be known. We are bound together with the love of Jesus. A disciple is one who knows that all followers of Jesus are ministers and that all believers have at least one spiritual gift and all do not have the same spiritual gift. All who are part of the body of Christ have a vital task to perform in the kingdom of God. No one is unimportant. All gifts are needed and all are to be used to build up the body of Christ so that the body will be a strong witness for Jesus. A disciple realizes, four, that Following Jesus means complete, complete obedience to all that Jesus commands. John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Luke 9, 23, how often are we to take up our cross? Daily and follow him. This is a total commitment to the ways of Christ and a willingness to give up everything that includes one, including one's life for Jesus. When the will of God and the will of the disciple are in opposition, the disciple will always, always yield to the will of God. 
5. A disciple realizes that walking with Jesus will overturn everything in one's life through the glorious through a glorious revolution. And that revolution comes because God reveals himself to us, who he is and how we are to follow him. A disciple realizes that no sacrifice made for the cause of Christ can compare with the sacrifice Jesus made by coming to live among us and die on the cross for our sin. Seven, a disciple realizes that the abundant life of peace, joy, hope, rest, and so many other things that God wants us to have is found only in Jesus and that we have the privilege of being God's presence wherever we go to show others this abundant life. Eight, a disciple is one who understands and utilizes biblical ways to settle disputes among believers. A disciple realizes that he is rich in things that really matter. These things are spiritual, not material. The older I get, the more I realize things are not the important thing. It's spiritual. The investment we make in the lives of others. Last 10. A disciple will be known not by how much he knows, but by how much he loves. As we start at the beginning, it's love, it's love flows out of us. There are many, many, many other aspects of discipleship, but these are at least a good platform on which to build. In summary, a disciple knows that spiritual growth or sanctification is a daily process Daily, take up your cross daily and follow him. To be more like Jesus, learning his way, copying his lifestyle, obeying the truth of scripture, knowing the word of God in the depths of one heart and in the depths of our life. So that each day, the disciple, you, me, and all of those that we're working with will be more like Jesus as we sang. To be like Jesus, that's all I ask to be like him. May we allow God to lead us to be more intentional in the kingdom of God will grow spiritually and the kingdom of God will go grow numerically. God bless you as you minister each day. Baptist him now 362 footsteps of Jesus. Baptist him now 362 footsteps of Jesus. We'll be doing verse 1 with a chorus, verse 2 straight to verse 3, no chorus, and after verse 3 we sing the chorus and then we retard in verse 4. Verse 1 chorus, 2, 3 chorus, then final stanza. the calling come follow me and we see where thy footprints fall and lead us to be footprints of Jesus that makes the pathway glow we will follow the From now we will we'll be personalizing the verses. I will follow the steps of Jesus. Go daily on the cold dead mountains to seek in his sheep. All along by the seal was fountains helping the Temple holy preaching the word, calling forth of the poor and lowly sin. 
Mr. Blessing, God will bless you. We multiply his grace in your life. She has put in her best with her team. They have been rehearsing for this day. And I pray, Lord, will replenish your strength in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Reverend Philip said that he had been in discipleship in the last 40 years. When we are doing the closing prayer, I'm going to invite one of his. Uh, disciples in Jaws, and that is Reverend Dr. Gabriel Ademola Yeni. He discipled him while he was in Jaws that time. So he's going to say the closing prayer and the benediction. So Dr. Ademola Yeni, you're going to be coming forward now so that we fill the gap. So he had testimony concerning the disciples all over the world. And we thank God for your life. The Lord will continue to make your fruit to abide in Jesus' name. It's a privilege to have uh, Pa Wilson around now. He used to be a young man, much younger than this in 82 when we met. And he was my teacher and disciple. He's still looking young, but he's, he has grown in age. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Shall we please rise up to pray for? I want us to pray for him. He has retired, but he's not tired. Let's pray for him and ask that the Lord will strengthen him afresh. And for the assignment that he has come to do in Nigeria, he shall be perfected. The Lord will watch over his wife, Sandy, Mama Sandy, and the children. Jordan and Lendi and he has grandchildren God's mighty hand will be upon them as their father has been a blessing unto generations let's pray they too will be blessings to their generations and generations to come and our eyes have seen great things how discipleship works we are ministers let's pray Lord Strengthen us also that we will not just be hearers, but we will go into our various places of service 
and be disciples indeed. Number one, we will be disciples of Christ. And you notice that his emphasis is on being like Christ. As long as we are in Christ, we will not be in crisis. And we will lead others into Christ likeness. Let's thank God for the answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Thank you, Father, for these wonderful words that our hearers have heard. And particularly for your servants, the, an example of Christ likeness. You have used them mightily in Nigeria to be a blessing, to sponsor many, to fellowship with many. He even opened his house out for people to sleep in, to eat, and to drink. And he has had great impact. It's good to have him back again to see so many things you have used them for. We return all the glory unto you because it's not by his power nor by might. Thank you, Father. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. We pray for strength for him that as he is aging, he will not be sick, he will be strong. He will continue to do exploit for you. Like Caleb testified, he said, 40 years ago, as I was strong, even so is my strength now. And he was speaking at 80. And I'm able to go in and out and to possess the land. And he was still asking, give me that land. And it was given. We pray that at 80, he will be strong. At 90, he will be strong. At 100, he will still be strong. And even at 120, at 150, if you will keep him, he will be strong. And generations will see the glory of the Lord. As we have had these great things, we go out in your strength too. That as many as have had this, we will not be disappointments unto you. But we will influence lives for great exploits. And you will grant us opportunities in life to affect others for you. Thank you, King of Glory. For his family, again, we pray your mighty hand will be upon them. You will keep them, keep every member before he gets back to the U.S. in the name of Jesus. And if it pleases you, when he will be, you will still grant him opportunity to come back and to be a blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Please say to somebody, be a blessing.